Welcome back and thank you for subscribing and tuning in again. All right, so what we see in this video is that we're going to use a polar array because you can see that we do have a circle that is going around this object at a 70 diameter. So we're going to use that and we also have a center here with a circle with a 20 diameter. So here's going to be the center. So remember that anytime you're going to use a polar array, you need to have a center and these typically will need to be spread out equally. Now, one of the things I want you to kind of pay attention to on where to start is that typically when you see one of these, they're not going to label where the angles of it. But you can see that this angle right here, and once again, excuse me for my kind of crooked line here, but this is going to be our zero degrees. So that's going to be a good place to start. That'll save me from having to figure out what this angle is at this object or any of these other ones. So it's typically start at where you see your zero degrees or at your 90 degrees. All right, so let's jump on over to AutoCAD and get started on this one. Okay, so let's go ahead and take care of our normal housekeeping. Let's turn our grid off. Let's go ahead and turn our ortho on. And let's go ahead and verify that these are my running O snaps that I have. And you can see that my dynamic input is on. All right, I'm gonna pan this up just so I can start my circle here at zero comma zero. And it is a diameter circle. So we're gonna choose circle center diameter. Let's type in zero comma zero, enter. And then let's go ahead and type in the diameter, which is 20. Okay, I'm going to scroll out a little bit. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my circle here to the side. Now, I can use a visual aid of drawing that circle that's at 70 diameter. And I'm going to do that, but I'll also show you another way of doing this. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our circle center diameter. We can still do it at 0, 0. And then we'll type in our diameter of 70. You can always use this as a good reference, but if you want to kind of use something a little bit quicker instead of creating that, I can go ahead and create that circle center diameter out here that has a diameter of six. So I can go circle center diameter. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my tracking. So I'm going to touch this center. And then once I get the green tracking lines going this direction, I have to type in the radius. So remember that that circle is telling me that I have a diameter of 70. So half of that should be 35, which is the radius. So I'll type in 35, enter. And you're going to see that that circle will indeed land right at that quadrant. And this one has a diameter of 6. All right. So let's go ahead and put our other circle around this one. And I can go ahead and get rid of this circle now. It was there just to locate the center of this circle. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that circle. And I'm going to create a circle with a radius of 8 around it. So I'm going to go to circle, center radius. It's going to be right at this center. So I'm going to click this center. And it has a radius of 8. All right. So one of the things I want to do is that I want to kind of analyze this a little bit. So I'm going to refer back to the drawing. And here you can see that I do have six of those. All right, so now we got to do a little bit of magic or a little bit of logic here to think about it. So I have that this line is going to this center and then this line is going to this center. So I have to calculate what angle is this? One kind of quick way of doing this is that we know a circle has 360 degrees and then we have six of these. So 360 and I know my writing will be not the best here on the side, but if I divide that number by 6, we're just kind of figuring that out in our head here. That should be 60. So this angle is sitting at 60 degrees. Now that's really important for me because I'm going to try to create this arc here. So what I need to do first is that I need to find this circle here and then this circle. And I'm sorry for calling them circles when they're actually arcs. But I need to define these two arcs. So I'm going to go ahead and define these two, and then I can create this radius that's going in between this, which is a radius of 20. All right, so let's switch back to AutoCAD. So what I need to do with this is I'm just going to create a copy of this, but I'm going to also rotate it. 
The way we're going to do this is use the rotate command. Select the objects that I want to rotate. And in this case, I really don't need that center circle there, but I'm just going to copy it over anyway. So once I'm done selecting the objects, enter will take me to the next step. It's saying select my base point. So whatever I want to rotate this around. And remember that 0, 0, is where all this started from. So I'll hit enter. Or I could have went to this center of this circle. Either one will work. Now make sure that you do select the word copy here. And now remember that positive numbers are in a counterclockwise rotation. So if I want to go up this direction, that's going to be a positive value. And if I want to go down this direction, it's going to be a negative. So clockwise is negative numbers. Positive numbers are counterclockwise. All right. So I want to go up that 60. And I'm just going to type in 60. Enter. And then that should end the command for me. All right, now I have my two circles and I can define that arc there. And remember that that arc was sitting at 20. So I'm going to use the fillet command. I'll go ahead and go to radius. Type in 20. Enter. And remember that we want to click on the two objects to make that. So I want that arc to start somewhere here. So I'll left click here. And then I'll left click here. All right. So now that I defined just this little part, I also need another arc on this side to define where it's going to be along on this side. So what I'm going to do is use the mirror command. I'm going to select this arc, enter. I'll go from this quadrant. And long as I'm going horizontal, and it doesn't matter, and that's another reason why I have my ortho turned on. So if I go over this direction and simply left click and hit enter, I'll have both of those. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and get rid of some of this stuff, and that's going to keep it nice and clean for us whenever we create the final product. So let's go ahead and delete these two circles. And then I'm going to go ahead and trim off this portion here. And then I'm going to get rid of this portion here. And inside of the trim command, one thing I do like is they have the delete function inside of it. So I'm going to trim that portion off, and I'm also going to get rid of that arc. All right, let's go ahead and hit escape. And I will come back to this just to show you if you did make a mistake, what you can do to clean up your drawing. So this is going to be one of those kind of neat things I will show you. All right, so let's go ahead and use a polar array. The objects that we want to array are going to be here. So I selected this arc, this arc, and this circle. Enter. Now it's asking me for that base point or that center axis of revolution. So I'm going to go to this center. And right now it's trying to pick actually the my UCS. But don't worry about it. If I if it messed up and you clicked the wrong part, you can always come up here and go to base point. And then I'm just going to type in CEN, enter. And then I'll click on my circle. All right. And hopefully that should have cleaned it up. But if it didn't, we'll just hit the escape button and come back and do it again. So you can see that it is kind of going a little crazy right now. Let's go ahead and undo this. So I'm just going to use the undo function. And it, for some strange reason, it still has my UCS selected here. And let's go back to the array command. I'm going to select these two, these three objects, sorry, enter. Let's go ahead and type in 0, 0 for the axis of revolution. And you can see that it will indeed complete that. Now, you can choose to leave the associativity turned on or off. Right now, my associativity is turned off. And what this does is that it keeps these all separated. So there will be some instances where you want to keep these separated. But in this case, just go ahead and hit the close array function. All right. So now you kind of created this. Now I'm going to undo some of this and I want to show you one other quick command here. All right. So I'm going to undo back to when I get to this point. And I'm just going to trim off this point. And you can see that these are going to overlap each other. I'm going to use the array command, just like I did before. And this is a polar array, by the way. I'm going to select all of these objects. And then what I'm going to do is type in 0, 0 as my point of revolution. And it will indeed create this. And I will need the associativity turned off for this example. So make sure that this is not blue. I'm going to go to close array. And you can see that I have double these you can see by the AutoCAD and if you look at it really closely you can see that these are thicker 
Well, you do have something that will clean that up for you. And underneath the modify, you have a broom here. That broom stands for overkill. So let's use the overkill command. It says select object. So I'm just going to put a window around all of this. Enter. You should get a dialog box that's going to appear. And don't worry about anything in this dialog box. Just go ahead and hit OK. And you're going to see that it will indeed delete those six overlapping objects. All right. So that's one of those neat things that will help you clean up your drawings. And you're going to see me do that a lot as we get into more and more complicated drawings. Just to make sure that everything is just one object over top of it. I will caution you that overkill will mess up your donuts. So if you're using donuts and you use overkill, it does something strange to them. All right. So thank you for watching and tuning in to this one. And I hope you kind of learned a little something about polar arrays. And if you got any comments or like, or if you're enjoying what you're watching, please subscribe. And I can't wait to get to the next one. And I'll see you guys there.